Okay, so this is a, a video response to the questions uh, for intelligent Christians. Now, firstly, um, I apologize. I am uh, certainly wouldn't describe myself as a Christian, and I'm not even sure that uh, that I would uh, weigh up to uh, to the description intelligent. But I'd like to think that I'm at least of average intelligence, and I'd like to uh, to respond to th this video in a way which I'm sure the guy that wrote this um, would feel a little bit uh, kind of pissed off because I'm not directly answering his questions. You see, the problem for me uh, is that um, th there is, for me there's one big question. Uh, there's really one major question which, which is all to do with uh, what's really going on. As you can see on my t-shirt I've got the question, what's really going on? And um, I don't think there is one answer to this. I've been doing some research, um, finding out what people have to say in response to this question. But one aspect of it, uh, for me, is that you can really only know um, a bit about what's really going on if you become aware um, of how you got to be like you are, or should I say about myself, how I got to be how I am. You know, why I make the choices that I do. Why do I ask the questions that I do? And when I ask questions, am I really seeking answers? And so my first question would be for the, for, the, for the guy who put out these questions, which I think, by the way, are great questions, and I'm really delighted that there are over three million people who've seen it. It's fantastic, because it means that finally, you know, we've got to the stage where um, it's possible for anybody to actually get to the masses and ask them important questions. Um, I don't think the questions are really going to get through to the people you want to get through to because uh, because it all comes back to the question of why and how. How do we get to be the way we are? And so, uh, in my experience, um, take, for example, fundamentalist religious people. They could be fundamentalist Christians. They could be fundamentalist Jews or Muslims or Hindus or anything. Even fundamentalist Buddhists. Apparently, they do exist. Um, if you take any fundamentalist, then mostly uh, what I've found is that they're not aware of why they are doing what they're doing, why they are thinking what they're thinking, why they're believing what they're believing, why they're saying what they're saying. So there's the big question. Why do you ask these questions? And are you really truly asking them with a desire for responses and are you open to any response? Or uh, have you really, is it really not, are they really not questions? They're statements um, that are sort of guised as questions which are trying to debunk a way of thinking. And you see, I have a problem with the questions uh, in a way because the minute you use the word God, you enter into what I would call cloud cuckoo land. Um, and I, I speak a lot in public and, and I ask people whether they believe in God and you know, most, half the people say yes and the other half say no and there's always a small percentage of people who say something else. And I, you know, apologize at first, and I apologize to you if you fall into the either yes or the no category, because for me, you know, to say you believe in God is, is, is equally as ridiculous as to say you don't believe in God, because it, it, according to my understanding, this three-letter word is, for a start, is just a, a sound, God, it's a sound, right? And, you know, if you ask a baby, like I've got a 22-month-old, do you believe in God? It would just be totally meaningless, because that would just be, you know, the question would just be a bunch of sounds. And it, God is just a word, it's just a three-letter word that comes up with a sound. And I think even to people who claim they believe in God, that they're saying that they believe in something which is beyond the human perception. And so if there is something beyond human perception, how can you say you believe in it? It's like saying, do you believe in infinity? Well, you can't get your head around infinity, because whatever you think about, infinity is bigger. So, and the same thing applies to God. How can you say, how can anybody say they believe in that which is beyond the realms of belief? You see, because language is uh, only... Uh, is only uh, real in, in time and space. Within time and space it has a beginning, it has an end. Whereas God, or the realm of God, uh, according to those who believe in, in God, whatever that means, is beyond the realm of time and space. And therefore it's not possible to even speak about God really. And therefore to say you believe in God, it seems to be to be crazy. And to say you don't believe in God is again saying that there's, there is a concept in which you don't believe. And so what I say is, is that God is simply unbelievable. 
It's not something that is possible to believe. Um, and having said that, and having said that God is really not, you know, the whole idea is not expressible in language. Language is, you know, language is so limited. You, you try, for example, to, uh, to describe to somebody who's never eaten an apple, try and describe what it's like. And there's no way you could describe it. So if you can't describe that, how on earth can you use the word God to describe that which is beyond our perception? Now, for those people who say they don't believe in God, what you really seem to be saying to me is that you are saying that you don't believe that there is anything outside of your perception. Now, to me, that seems very, very strange, simply because uh, I've learned in my 41 years on the planet that there are things that when I was 25, I don't, didn't perceive that I do perceive now. So why shouldn't I believe that there is such a thing as something outside of my perception? To be continued.